So now we move on to the last section of the day and that is a panel discussion like we promised where we are going to the topic of the discussion is moving forward 365 days from now realistic targets and gettable goals. So we have our four panelists with us. The first panelist with us is Ms. Mrs. Preeti Patkar. She's the founder of the organization Prerna and has worked for more than 25 years to protect women and children in the red light areas of Mumbai by defending their rights and dignity, by giving them options and opportunities to lead a respectable life. Under her guidance, Prerna has to its credit the largest number of legal interventions and writ petitions in the country to protect the rights and dignity of the the children and women victims of commercial sexual exploitation and trafficking. Mrs. Preeti Patkar, welcome you. Our second panelist is Persis Sidwa. She is a practicing advocate with Majlis and appears before the family court session, uh, family courts, session courts, and high court in Mumbai. She coordinates the Rahat program, which is a collaboration between the Department of Women and Child Development, Government of Maharashtra, and Majlis Legal, Cent uh, Legal Center to provide social legal support to survivors of sexual violence. Persis. Our third panelist is Sumana Rao. She's the director of Sahas Foundation in Hyderabad, an NGO focused on empowering children with safety skills to prevent sexual abuse. She has co-authored a book called Safety Club. It educates young children in the age group of two to seven on safety skills to prevent child sexual abuse. Sahas Foundation has empowered over 8,000 children with safety skills. We welcome you, Sumana. And our final panelist is Dr. Shabya Saldana, the, the ones who were here yesterday already know her. She is a Bangalore-based gynecologist who started Enfold in 2001 to impart sexuality education to children, parents and teachers. Dr. Saldana has been instrumental in setting up hospital-based collaborative child response centers. And of course, Rahul Bose is moderating the panel discussion. First, I'd like to say hello to uh, Shobhada. And then to the rest of the... <laughs> no, no, actually, my apologies. So, Principal Secretary UK is here from the um, Women and Child Development of Government of Maharashtra. Thank you very much. So, when we started uh, last morning, we, were, we, had, we started with a discussion, a panel discussion on uh, what is the gap between the enormous need for CSA in this country, I mean, for, again, CSA in this country, and what is being done. And we said that at the end of the two days, we will talk about bridging that gap, gettable goals, realistic targets. So I'm going to kick it off. This is an open discussion after the first, after our panelists have the first uh, viewpoint. Anybody who wants to dive in, jump in with suggestions, please do. I have a few thoughts in my mind. Whatever thoughts you have, we'll collate it together and then throw it open. For starters, can start we can start from any side. Fine, so we will start uh, from the left. There's nothing ever wrong with that. Um, but let me first say that uh, here are the things that came up for discussion so far. I missed four sessions, one yesterday and three today. So please feel free to contribute if I have missed anything. First is we badly need a political pressure group so that funding is not cut like it was the last time around so that if we want uh, 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 certain uh, things done by government, if you want certain things implemented, uh, because you, all of us have more or less agreed that the way to go is to get government involved and do this on a large scale. Vidya just very eloquently talked about how it's important to uh, drive it through personalities. So I'm going to put my hand up for this first one and say, I will create that pressure group. I've been a part of a cross-party panel, uh, Secretary UK, where we had uh, Milin Deora, Jay Panda from the BJD, uh, Shanavaz Hussain from the BJP, Prema K from the Congress, um, Supriya Sule from uh, NCP, and others. And I told you about this last morning, campaigning against malnourishment of children. So I'm going to go to these very same, if they are still MPs, very same MPs or others, and I will uh, definitely get back to you with at least 10 very important people in the political establishment across party lines 
who are committed to this. Then we will sit together and we will put our 10 or whoever you guys decide, create that group and run with it. But that will then be the permanent CSA pressure group that we will put pressure on at the center. And since the principal secretary UK is here, we need no pressure group in Maharashtra. Other states, we will tackle bit by bit. So that's the first one. The second thing we discussed was, how do we get some of that 10,000 crores that's available through CSR? I was speaking to Sachin Pilot the other day, and Sachin said, I said, you know, a lot of these companies are disguising what they used to already do as CSR. If they were feeding their workers, they said, we have a nourishment scheme. Oh, you know, that, that's nonsense. So he said, that is utter nonsense. We've seen through all that. We've become very, very strict. It has to be something that is new, that, is, that, they're, you know, that we know that is out of their comfort zone, that they're really working hard on, and they're intent on. So that's the second question. Whoever wants to contribute to that from here or from here, when we come to that, please stick your hand up, and then let's chat about it. How do we, what are the strategies to get CSR uh, involved in CSA? Because CSR normally is involved in hygienic things, if you know what I mean. So how do we make this attractive? How do we make this imperative? How can we make it, uh, for example, I know that there's one thing where they love to do things in the geographical area of their factories or where they work, whether it's with Nanded, whether it's Kolhapur, wherever it might be, it's attractive to them to work in that area. So can we, can we strategize and be slimy and get stuff out of these guys by, by, you know, by, by doing it in, the, you know, uh, in a strategically correct way? The second thing, the third thing that came up was, this entire discussion that has been going on about mandatory reporting versus doctors at MTP versus there was, uh, again, I think, uh, who was it whose Pooja spoke about the fact that she hardly ever, uh, this mandatory reporting hardly ever happens because otherwise she'd never get work done uh, as part of Prerna. So let's talk about that. Um, fourth is juvenile justice homes. How do we work with that? Apparently, there's a very combative, interesting session I missed. Um, uh, uh, registering them as well as monitoring. This is something that we would definitely speak to, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the government. And um, yeah, and that's it. So I'm going to throw it open. Persis, I know that you're going to be taking a different angle altogether. That's fine. Before we do anything, 365 days, no. 30 days from now, we are going to supply everyone with who was here in this room. To start with, if you're going to do something, we've got to get to know each other. Offline, you guys are getting to know each other. Let's, the foundation will do this. We will obviously give you a summary of each person's presentation. And everybody who attended, all of you have registered there. We know who you are. So at least, and with your permission, phone numbers and email addresses. So that from now on, pick up the phone and say, Rishi, I need a film made on CSA. Or, you know, I need, I need this done. I heard you guys do this. That we will start off by doing. I'm going to start from the left. Persis, uh, please feel free to speak about this or any other, any other thing, gettable goals, reachable targets in this community. Um, I'd just start a little with uh, the program. I know Flavia spoke about the program we have, uh, but Majlis uh, essentially works with uh, victims of sexual violence, both women and children. Uh, we have our Rahat program, which is a collaboration between the Department of Women and Child Development, Mr. O.K. is here, as well as uh, Majlis Legal Center. We essentially provide a hand-holding for the victim uh, from the time the FIR is lodged until the judgment and thereafter. So we are constantly engaging with various stakeholders, whether it's the police, whether it's the public prosecutors, uh, whether in court it is the judges, uh, whether it is helping her access compensation through uh, the Manodharya scheme now, uh, which is one of the pioneering schemes of uh, the Maharashtra government compensation scheme. So we essentially handhold her through this process. Uh, We've been working prior to POXO, and we've been working after POXO. POXO provides uh, a lot of facilities on paper for the victims. Um, you have the special child protection unit. You have special educators that have to be there in court. You have to have special educators that are available at police stations. Uh, you have to have the CWC that coordinates with the police. But essentially, what we've realized is that each of these stakeholders perform their function, but they are not interacting with one another. And it is because of this lack of interaction that the victim gets left behind. So the prosecutor is only interested on in how she deposes. The police is only interested on in how she records her statement. But the smaller nuances which the act actually provides for and which are there on paper 
are not reaching the victim. And what we feel is that if we, as groups that work with children, can provide and fill in those gaps. So uh, Rahul mentioned something about, let's do something in 30 days. So I have a suggestion for something that we could do in 30 days. The special court in Bombay, as well as police stations, are supposed to maintain lists of special educators and translators. That is special educators who can help interpret what children say when they're suffering from any disability. In court, while they are deposing, as well as at the police station, while their statements are being recorded. As of today, at a police station, if a victim is taken to the police station, and what we generally believe at Majlis is that avoid taking her to the police station because the act provides for any safe environment where her statement can be recorded. But the police is recording the statement, so whether they're recording the statement at an NGO, at the girl's residence, at the police station, if the child suffers from a disability, they do not have anybody to contact. So they are contacting us. Madam, kaha hai, kya hai, kisko dhunna hai. So then we have to call up people who are our personal contacts in other NGOs who we know. And these are police officers who actually care. So they'll take the trouble of making that phone call. Others will just record a statement. And then later, once the FR is lodged and we interact with her, we realize that this child suffers from a disability. And this was not what she intended to say. And the statement that has been recorded is faulty. And that, of course, creates a lot of other implications. Also, translators, because a lot of children have language issues or language barriers. So I think 30 days, if this is something we could put down, if you all are working on that, then if NGOs, organizations that have people who are willing to volunteer to help record these statements, but also be willing to come to court subsequently, because that is a problem that we faced. A lot of people are willing to help children record the statement, but then the special educator in all likelihood will also have to depose in court. So if, I mean, it would be great if people could volunteer for translation. Of course, that is provided, you know, language you're conversant in, but special educator. So that is something I think we could set as a 30-day goal, if people could volunteer for that. Well, we said 365 days. 30 days was just to get the network organized. Now this is getting really scary. But, but the point is, whether it's 30, 60, or 90, the point is well taken. And um, I'm sure Suchi has already somewhere put this down in her computerized memory. But who'd like to be next? Who'd like to pitch in next on any of the points that I had elucidated or, or anything else? Sure. You, Manjit? So I can, I can get started. So, um, so I, I thank the foundation for bringing us here together. Uh, this experience has been extremely humbling, and uh, I've learned a lot over the last two days. Um, if we look at the team around here, um, you know, uh, with the speakers and the rest of the audience as well. We're all from different geographical areas, and uh, we're also from different professions where some of us are doctors, psychologists, educators, um, lawyers, filmmakers. So it's uh, exciting to see people with different strengths come together to address uh, this uh, CSA uh, issue that we have passionately and compassionately. So. Um, there's a lot of wisdom in this, uh, in this group which uh, should be captured as best practices, as models, um, you know, that, that all of us can, uh, can learn from. And we've also, over the last couple of days, heard about all the different challenges, the systemic challenges, the financial challenges, um, and um, the lack of awareness and educational challenges and, and just the rampancy of the problem. So um, as a, as a nonprofit that's been in, in this field for a couple of years, uh, here are uh, kind of some of the things that, um, uh, you know, from, from a young nonprofit, these are some of the things that, uh, that I need or people, I'm sure there's a lot of young nonprofits um, in, in this group that want to help. And some of the things that uh, I have on mind is how can I scale my program up? How can I help every child across the country? And um, you know how can I work with the government? And Vidya shared a lot of best practices, which 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 I've I've made notes of, and I'd like to request her to mentor me and my group so that we can implement some of the things that you've done in Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. Um, and um, you know, and also uh, you know th you know how can we work with the center versus the state? And some of the things that you're doing in terms of talking to the the 10 MPs or bringing them together kind of, you know, I'd like to understand, or I think the team would love to understand the pitch that you're making to these politicians at the center so that we can learn at 
at each of the states and kind of use a similar pitch. You know, things like sometimes I have this hunch that, you know, children can't vote, so they, you know, it's hard hard to get their voice across to the politicians. So is it, do you make a pitch that it's a child and women, you know, no, program? No, it'll be dinner or lunch with some votes? famous heroine or something. <laughs> right, <laughs> whatever, yeah, whatever works for you, you know, needs to be shared with, with the rest of the group here. Sure. Sorry, the air condition is on my head. I don't have much hair, so. So whatever, whatever you learn, you know, needs to be uh, developed into a model and shared with the rest of the group so we can go back and implement it uh, across our states too. And again, the Tamil Nadu is a great model uh, for us to uh, follow as well. So, um, you know, from, a, from our next, uh, from, from the 365 days perspective, what, uh, what I'd like to uh, see is, uh, you know, Kind of a mentoring program for young um, nonprofits, so that we can, uh, you know, take, uh, you know, learn from from probably the hundred years of experience that's in this room, as opposed to kind of recreating the wheel and wasting a lot of time, as opposed to just reusing your wisdom, so that we can quickly impact as many children as we can. Um, also, just just one one additional. Think here is from from a 365 days perspective. Again, the, there's so many challenges in this area that um, we probably need to have a committee that um, identifies the top 10 issues that we can all work together on for the next one year. Right. So you kind of talked about the two two three issues: the the, the politics uh, uh, and the CSR and getting the funding there. Um, so kind of like what are the biggest issues um, in the preventive? Uh, you know, in prevention of CSR, in reacting to uh, CSR, which is the, the medical procedures, et cetera, and then kind of from a long-term perspective as well. And we're all sort of in, you know, we work in the different life cycles of the same uh, issue, right? So, so what you can do from the foundation perspective is um, get together uh, the 10 issues and then um, have from this whole team here, Kind of create subcommittees working on each of the issue where we have expertise, and then those subcommittees probably in the next 60 days can then create some sub goals, and then we can all meet again in a year and say this is what we've done. So that's that's my input. Okay, that's the session. Of course, what I missed out the elephant in the room was skilled personnel. Amit, you spoke about it yesterday. Yeah. Barefoot soldiers or counselors and therapists coming out of government uh, workers. You know, people are already working in hospitals, nurses, things like that. Anybody want to pitch in with that? Yeah, actually, yeah, sure. that was one of my points. So uh, just to put in what I thought would be good, uh, one is personal safety education, but personal safety education cannot be taught the way just sending books and things out. That doesn't help. As somebody mentioned, if a child can't say no to drinking milk and the parents slap the kid for not eating, there's no way in hell that kid is going to ever talk about sexual abuse. So it starts with an entire change in parenting. So personal safety, education, essential. The second thing is, as you said, trained personnel. We have so many children, we need that many. So in the curriculum, Bangalore and Karnataka and uh, Amrita School of Social Work in Kerala has already started bringing in social work, masters in social work. The third, uh, third um, semester divides you into different. So you do family and counseling, or you do child rights or something else. So in that, they were saying put in child sexual abuse or child abuse, child rights, child neglect, specifically because I know in medicine there was no such thing as child abuse or sexual abuse ever in our curriculum. So what can we so, do as a group here to yes. do that? So as social work, we need to look at putting in into the curriculum in masters in social work, putting it into the medical education. Will that be a state subject or a central subject? Uh, medical education is a state subject, but the people who run it are IMA, IMC, Med uh, Medical Council of India, IMA, the Indian Association of Pediatricians and what Dr. Durusha was saying is the FOGSI. So is it a gettable goal? Yes, yeah, I think so. Okay. I, I am attending that, so hopefully we can make a difference. Please. Yes. In fact, what we do in Bangalore, Christ College and one or two colleges who have a BA, DMED, program, we take about 12 hours on child sexual abuse alone as Enfold just comes in as a guest faculty in that program. But if you could, um, you know, systemize it, I think so much better. Did anybody else want to jump in with anything else that was earlier said about, uh, of course you will, please. 
But, but have you finished, Tasha? Sure? He was um, forgetting me. Not Let's at all. finish this subject and then we'll come back yeah, to yeah, the please. hospital part. Go ahead. If you want to finish on this part? Right? Um, yeah, just to tell you, in Amrita, uh, the specialization on child rights and child protection, I'm the visiting faculty. So we already have it incorporated. Perfect. So, yeah, we it's in it place. everywhere, just yes. not there. So yes, we can use definitely. Your models. Yeah. Definitely. I just want to talk about, you know, 30 days and what we can do. And one doable thing I feel is what you said yesterday, and it really touched my heart. Aren't there safe places for children? And can we, and you know, everybody in the audience did not react. And I felt that there are safe places for children while we're talking about, you know, many places which are not safe for children. Maybe we need to involve children. And for the city of Mumbai, we, there are a couple of NGOs sitting here. Maybe we can create that list so that every time the child has to report, mm -hmm. we know where we can take the child and which is that safe place. So we can map that. And I think it's doable within 30 days. We don't need a budget for it. Uh, and very often, I realize uh, we should go by things which do not re need money and then go to uh, yeah. You know, asking for things which need uh, budgetary allocation. Uh, with Mr. Uke here, I also want to say what Maharashtra state government is doing again, which does not need uh, budgetary allocation, is uh, just two months ago, we, um, UNICEF, uh, Maharashtra Department of Women and Child, and FACSA together had a lovely training program for district officers, district women and child development officers, uh, discussing this whole issue of child sexual exploitation in institutions and how do you prevent it. And the outcome of this two days training program was, which came from the officers, was that we need to involve children. And the best way of involving children is to have district level child protection committees where there would be representatives from these children's homes, juvenile homes, on this committee. And it will be a group of NGOs, the district officers, as well as the children who meet regularly and talk about what is happening in their institutions. So giving children that space to come out and speak, and with civil society participation in such committees, I'm quite hopeful, quite, quite hopeful. So this is the second model which many of us in different states may want to start because in Maharashtra, we are almost taking that uh, forward. Uh, where Prerna is concerned, uh, I just want to say two things uh, that we are taking on the responsibility is, you know, um, even you said it and since yesterday, many of us have been talking about several best practices, several lessons learned and several challenges faced but hardly documented. And in some cases, even if they are documented, they are not fairly disseminated. So Prerna is starting something called a National uh, Resource Center, which will be like a one-stop uh, shop for all the resources, all that we have learned, all that we have unlearned, all that is happening in this space will be available on this portal or the website. And it won't just be lying there will ensure the job of the National Resource Center is to get keep connecting to people. So yesterday, there was a very young lady who asked this question, you know, what do I do? You know, what is it in POXO about the police? Now, she's young, but, you know, I've seen it, and I get agitated. Don't you know that? It's there in POXO. But she's young. She doesn't know it. So this National Resource Center would address the young who have just come into the space and also the veterans. Uh, you know, who want to know more about what is happening, not just nationally, though it's called the National Resource Center. We are hoping to have information across the globe. So whatever is happening in other countries, the best practices, what worked, what didn't work, on this website. And it is going to be a very, very interactive website. So we'll have somebody like Rahul Bose, we'll have somebody like Vidya, we'll have somebody else who will hopefully join and you know, make it as interactive as possible. The second thing that we are trying to do is, it's called the Mumbai Child Safety ne um, Network, where we have, we're working with about six NGOs. Some of them are here, Sneha, Bal Prafulta, Apnalai, uh, Angan. We've got together and we've identified community youth because at the end of it, you know, we all spoke about commu community empowerment. Vidya spoke about shutting, you know, she'd be happy the day Tulir shuts and there's no role for Tulir to play. And yes, that's how it should be. 
communities need to be empowered. And I think young people, it's nice to catch them while they are young, energetic, and have the time. So what we're trying to do through this network is to train these young people to understand what child sexual exploitation is, to report, to resist, and tell the community on how to report and resist and react to child sexual exploitation. So it's, it's a continuum from talking about child rights to child protection to definitely justice de delivery. So this is our uh, second initiative that's happening. Um, I also feel that, you know, uh, in this two days deliberation, of course I wasn't there for parts of this uh, two days, but uh, the whole issue of traveling sex offenders, can we put that on the agenda? Because in the past when we used to discuss this issue, it was always Goa. And as if the entire responsibility of talking on this issue lied on NGOs working in Goa, but it's happening everywhere. And uh, could we talk a bit more in the coming 365 days about the traveling sex offender? Um, yeah, and of course the Delhi court model. Uh, it's not just saying that it's a beautiful model, but how do we ensure uh, standards in this kind of a model? And how do we ensure that it's sustained? Just to give you an example, when we went to the Karkadoma court, beautiful, everything was in place. And we felt so happy that there are two entrances, one for the accused to enter and the other for the victim to come in. Very happy, we were sitting in the court and post lunch the proceedings started and the victim entered from the same door the door from where all of us enter, and you won't believe it, our hearts sank. So somewhere, I think, we, we, we have models, we have doable models, how do we sustain them, and how do we ensure the quality in these, in these models? And can we work around those, you know, uh, maintaining those qualities in, in some of these models in the next 365 days? Thank you. Your first point about the national resource, what was it called? The, the, was it a national resource center. Center. Uh, can others contribute to it in terms uh, of Actually, their... we don't have a major role to play. It will work only if everybody contributes. Great. So, for example... Otherwise, it doesn't work at all. Where's Pooja? Uh, you said Arpan had a model, right? So, I'm just saying, that's just thinking aloud. That, so, this is, this is something that can really be... That can really gather uh, a lot of moss. Yes? Uh, I have two things to say. Uh, one sec. So, Jinu, will you give... Thanks. I have two things to say. This is uh, to take, uh, take uh, you know two points which Preeti made. One is that uh, we have got increasingly sucked into the vortex of working with traveling sex offenders, though that was never our mandate to start with, simply because most of them now in India, unlike most people's uh, misconception, they don't come through the tourism route. They get a tourist visa. That's where it ends. Most of them come to work through NGOs and charities as volunteers. And you know that's where we have to be put in the safeguards. So one is I'd like to tell you all that the British government has a system that any British citizen who comes in as a volunteer to work with any charity across the world has to be vetted by the British government. And there's a website where you can send in the information and the British government vets that person. It's not foolproof, but it's something. That's one. Two is that we, ha we are planning to have a conference on TSOs later on this year. So we'll keep you informed because we are looking mainly at TSOs who, who work through the charity and the NGO route. And the third point about the Delhi High Court is that it is just not a structure, but the actual, they were actually, they made guidelines on how the whole process for the child in the court is enabling. So I think we need to look at how those guidelines can be adopted. They, they call the vulnerable witness, vulnerable intimidated witness guidelines. How those guidelines for the trial, during the trial procedures, can be adopted in various court systems. Yeah, and one is adopted and the second, you know, you take the second step and ensure that they're implemented. implemented. And that's yeah, my, yeah, yeah. my concern. Yeah, yeah. And yes, you know, when you speak about traveling sex offenders, I think somewhere during these two days, but never mind, we'll do it next time, is to talk. I mean, Freddie Pete's case in Goa taught us a lot about what Vidya is saying, you know, how... Uh, talking about development work and how people are getting into uh, this space and abusing children under the garb of doing uh, developmental work. So yeah, we need to be really very alert on that front. And I don't mean to so, take up for the Delhi High Court, but Kakaduma was not officially inaugurated. So perhaps that's why the reason why they came into the same door. They're waiting for the new Chief Justice who joined yesterday to inaugurate it. 
Yeah, but they're waiting for the new chief justice. Shoeba, you had some stuff to say. Yes, just it's not 30 days, it's 365 days. Okay. When we meet here next year, we should have come and said we've accomplished, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a group together, we've accomplished something. I'd also suggest not too much of a hurry to rush things because sometimes in our rush to, for times, uh, just giving knowledge is not sufficient to change either attitudes or behavior. So by rushing in and throwing out modules and giving lots of stuff to people and telling them may not give us a safer child. So whatever we do, uh, we need to train, we need to think it out, and we need to choose people carefully. And I think this is where the government comes in, is that the choice, the problems that uh, Vidya is facing, we face in Bangalore, child protection officers, SJPU police officers, child welfare officers, when they are being chosen, they need to be chosen with care. So this pressure on the government that when you're choosing somebody to work with children, please choose somebody who are effective. The biggest issue with NGOs and institutions, I would suggest to you all, we're always looking for people who will work for low money and give us all their time. And uh, sex offenders, child sexual abusers, love working with NGOs because they have so many vulnerable children at their you know, mercy. So please, when you recruit, take care. So that's one. Second thing is, uh, in terms of the hospitals, like if you put a statement down that you cannot take a child who's been abused, sexually abused, I'd like to get out of victim and survivor. A child who has been sexually abused cannot go to the police station, full stop. Now, if you put that down, they have to find a place. They will find the hospital nearby or they will find some place which is safer and less uh, horrifying than a police station. So certain things just have to, Poxo says it and let's put it in. You can do that. Do we also need to create some kind of a, uh, not we in here, but is there a need that we feel there are amendments people are wanting yeah. in, in acts, right? So, Persis, maybe you can dive in here. Maybe that's something we can say in a year from now we should have accomplished a, a consensus on those amendments and got them done. Uh, you have to do the amendments. Uh, so, to okay, yes, then that's so, um, actually, um, the act has a provision, and most acts do, that two years after the act has been passed, uh, you can uh, move uh, the commission, uh, the uh, department to make any review in the act. And by November 2014, any reviews That's that have right. to be made to POXO would have to be submitted. And actually, I think this is a good opportunity. We'll be subsequently, uh, Rahat will be conducting uh, with the NCPCR uh, a national consultation in Delhi in the month of June or July. Where, we'll, where we will be inviting all the stakeholders who are working on the POXO Act to come in with their suggestions that should be and will be presented to the review committee. And after that, the recommendations will subsequently be submitted to the ministry. So I think it's very important uh, for us at this point of time to put our heads down and to say what is that that can be reviewed. Review is, of course, different from amendments because amendment is something that cannot be done by the review committee. So these are small contradictions in the act, formats that we would like to create to make the act more easy, clarifications in certain sections, not amendments. So I know mandatory reporting is something everyone is very eager to talk about and eager to change, but that would not qualify uh, in for the... That would be an amendment which we can seek and lobby for and work towards. That's what I mean. So do we need to create a kind of a, or is it the same pressure group that I promised I would create? Yes. So that we go pressure, to them yes. and say, listen, we need to do these things yes, so that outside would be, of uh, the yeah, little The review committee reviews. will look at more smaller contradictions, inconsistencies, making the act more user friendly. Uh, but uh, yes, mandatory reporting will be an amendment because you would, or even age of consent, that would be an amendment. Yeah. Uh, Rahul, while you've taken on that responsibility, there's a there's a very nice, vibrant work Mumbai uh, working group which has been looking at POXO uh, pre and now post. And one of the things that yes has been pinching us is the mandatory reporting part of it. So before uh, you know uh, going in in front, uh, taking our suggestions, it would be nice for us maybe foundation no, no, and no, Prerna no, together. No, no, no you me misunderstood me. I'm not doing anything Lovely. but just getting 10 of them to say we want to listen all about CSA. You're going to do the talking. I'm not going to do the talking. Yeah, so yeah. whoever it is. I, so, I so Rahul, I'm, I'm, I just, meant we. I'm just going to get them into the room. Okay, great. After that, you have to convince them to become your pressure group. Okay, lovely. So what we need to do is we need to, so this is an appeal to all of us sitting in this room. Can we from now onwards, from tomorrow onwards, start documenting 
what is it about mandatory reporting that is working well for us and not working well for us? So somewhere in the month of June, if some of us with the foundation and fact say, if we could come together and make a presentation and we start the documentation process, like Vidya said, everybody needs evidence. You know, you just can't get emotional and say, well, this is not working for me. It's so tiring. It's this and that. If we can give them concrete cases and say, well, with mandatory reporting, this worked beautifully for me. And with mandatory reporting, look at the mess that it has created. That will be very, very helpful. So if we can all aim around June or July to get together with documenting what our experiences around mandatory reporting has been, I think it will be very, very helpful. Ma'am, you had a suggestion? Yeah. This is after the 365 days, maybe the second phase of what we're doing. Um, the last two days, we've been talking about mainstream children um, and child sexual abuse, but uh, what about the mentally challenged? Because um, some so of So should we do this? Yeah, for for that is yeah. the second phase. Absolutely correct. Right. For the sake of this discussion, let's not talk about this, but let's all put our thoughts down on what the next ASC CSA right. should include, which hasn't included. I mean, there are many, many, inshallah, yeah. many, many ASC CSA that will happen. So please, I mean, I think, yeah. Vidya, you started yesterday morning by saying 70% of the people who should be here aren't here, who might not be directly running CSA organizations, mm -hmm. but have a lot to do with this, with this ecosystem. And we'd love to have them next year, for example. So all of that, definitely. But just because, you know, we're just looking to see right now is there anybody who has any other ideas of what we can, what needs to be, and can be achieved together, as opposed to individually over the next 365 days? Yes, sir, please. Oh, sorry, who has the mic? Whoever has the mic, it's fine. Is that Nishtha? I can't see. Yeah. Yeah, hi. Uh, we were talking of curriculum, so I just wanted to flag, uh, like, in law college, child-related laws are not taught. So is that something that could be taken up? Where uh, child related laws be taught in law colleges. Uh, police also, if in the curriculum itself, there can be something about management of uh, child abuse cases. Um, then, with regard to uh, traveling sex offenders, I'm very happy to hear people saying that it's not a Goa specific problem because I keep saying that in every presentation. And I really feel there is a need for mapping of pedophiles. I need, feel there's a need for a national plan to look at this issue. Um, also, we find that we found that a lot of uh, the traveling sex offenders come with business visas, which is also a matter to be looked at in the course of looking at a national plan. And uh, yesterday also I had mentioned that when we have people at the ground level employed by the government, this thing of contract appointments has to be examined and we have to have regular appointments, otherwise we cannot get good counselors, good work at the ground level. Who has the mic? Whoever has the mic has the power. Yes, you have the mic. Hi, Hi I'm Tripti. I'm from Mahiti. We help uh, NGOs with communication and fundraising. And the point that you were talking about, CSR. Um, so so um, in the act, there are examples of areas that can be funded. Child protection isn't one of them, but there is education and there is health. And it depends on the creativity of the proposal writer, really to frame the proposal. But why can't we get child protection put you into can, this? You can, you can. There is that proposal. Okay, so that's one. So, but, but in so the meantime, with what we have, you're saying? Yeah, with what you have, see, you'll have to work on it on two two ends. One is to lobby it to be actually present. I mean, because obviously that's better than anything else. But you can't do that without pushing out proposals in the faces of corporates, um, saying that this is a requirement. And framing it, one, under the headings that already exist, um, and develop a relationship. Once you, once you convince a person for any kind of fundraising, once you convince a person about a cause, the person will try their best. Uh, to, to so we're just putting all this down. I, uh, Madhavi? We were talking about criticism run badly. One Mr. Chakma did that. Uh, criticism oh, run badly. Run badly. Most of these institutions yeah. need to generate money from CSR activity. And if children are barred from taking that, child can receive... There's, 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 no, there's education. No, no, she, no, one second. One second. Madhavi, Madhavi, she accepts that we... That's what needs to be that's done. In the meantime, is there a way of taking money out which is not... So, uh, very quickly, you know, Ms. Ms. Saldana talked about, um, you know, getting this uh, into the uh, curriculum for 
B. Ed. Um, you know, and the teachers, right? But um, what what I'd like for us to also work on is have a subcommittee within our team here to um, work with the government um, so that the uh, the IAS officers responsible for uh, the curriculum, like the CBSE curriculum, the ICSE curriculum, and uh, looks like in Tamil Nadu, uh, Ms. Vidya again was able to get it into the Tamil Nadu state curriculum. But if we can get the basics of uh, you know, child sexual abuse prevention concepts into um, every curriculum, especially the central curriculum, so that every child that's initiated into the schools uh, goes through it naturally, you know, from first grade onwards. Uh, and we've, uh, in fact, my partner Chandana and I have started working with the government on that, but we'd like, we need a little more momentum from some of the, you know, more mature people in the industry to support us. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, mm, my name is Ramesh Kirambi and I, we are a group from Hyderabad. We call ourselves Break the Silence. We are not an NGO, we are a citizen's initiative. So we believe that being a citizen's initiative gives us a little more power, that's what we feel, so that you know we can talk about it to others. Anyway, the, uh, the, uh, in our experience in the last one year with Break the Silence, we find when we go to schools and talk about CSA, the first thing that we notice is that in the general public do not think that CSA happens. Parent, teacher, audience, CSA, what is CSA? Is it really there? So I think that as India, as a country, we need to bring this out and say that CSA is a huge happening. When we go to movies, we see Vico Turmeric, we see this, we see that. Can we do something on that? That person, yeah. your child is in danger. First of all... That's what we started off with yesterday, if you remember. Yeah. When it was just, somebody said, who was it who said, it's so painful that they can't see that, that can't evident see truth. And it's, who, it's, it's one presentation. They, was it you, Amit, who said it? Yeah. They're just not yeah. seeing it. It's, it's, it's a disbelief that, you know, it's not going to happen to my child. That's yeah. point number one. Number two, we found that in, uh, in, when we spoke to children, there's a lot of abuse that happens in, our, uh, you know, state transport buses. Now, this is an issue that needs to be addressed. How is it to be addressed? I am not too sure. We are trying to speak to the local commissioner at Andhra Pradesh, see how we can take it forward. But this is an area that huge CSA is happening, especially with boys traveling in buses. Now, this is an area that really we as this group, state-wise, nationally, have to look at it and kind of... And to you, Rahul, if you can get us a brand ambassador for CSA, it would be fantastic. <laughs> well, um, Amit has to run, so... You That's right, yeah. So okay, so... If, if I can, you know, have... Complete gender inequality. Yeah. Two men will close Absolutely. this discussion. <laughs> Out of the three. Can, can I say something? <laughs> no, just one second. Yeah. One second. <laughs> we, Principal Uke has been waiting. I'm sorry. Principal Secretary Uke has been waiting, so we have to have him in. Maybe we can, con we can chat after that. But we do want to hear from him. But Amit's just going to finish, and then we're going to finish here. I'm leaving soon, yeah. so yeah, yeah, I have to go. Yeah. Um, uh, just very quickly, it seems that there are two broad models that we are looking at. One is to do with uh, 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 awareness building, um, uh, getting people to uh, accept that is CSA, going to a variety of uh, um, public spaces, schools, buses, etc. The kind of work that Tuli, the excellent work that they're doing, is at a large scale. That's one. The second one is about organizations which have specific needs, such as Enfold. Um, which has, which goes to hospitals and builds certain t specific kind of services, or um, Muskan from Pune, uh, who are working with the abusers, or something, uh, the kind of work that we do in SBT. These are vulnerable populations, and we have to uh, uh, develop models which are highly specialized. And the kind of training and the kind of uh, capacity building that we require is at a, another level. And therefore, I believe that the system has to be tiered, and we have to think about uh, people who are highly qualified, who can be trainers, who can be looking at the tertiary level care of children who are abused and the long-term effects of it. And at the other end, we have a wide range of other uh, stakeholders, including, uh, you know, um, uh, um, uh, responsible citizens, two barefoot counselors who go into the community to work. So, again, th this is in a nutshell what I feel as a concept that we need to hold in our minds to be able to go forward, and we have to address both. As, as a, my own responsibility, what I w wanted to sort of, you know, take on is to actually connect some of the NGOs that are doing very good work in Delhi, but again, doing it in pockets. So nobody's doing the kind of work that 
uh, you know, both of you are doing in, in um, uh, Chennai or in Bangalore. And it's important for them to know that. Mm -hmm. And if you can, arrange for them for the training to happen so the systems over there can also start building. So that is something that I'm claiming and I, and I hope to take forward within the next few months. So there'll be yeah. two things that will happen. This discussion was to see as a group, we've come together for the first time and there'll be many more who will join, inshallah, in the future. But as a group, what is it that we can commit to over the next 365 days when we come back. But within this group, there'll be many formal and informal alliances that will have been created, which is absolutely wonderful. Pick up the phone, need some help, keep doing that. But as an, a massive total entity, what are the things, I mean, we're gonna put all these suggestions down, by the way. We'll get your feedback and we'll say, okay, these are the three things they're gonna set for ourselves as an entire group. Subsidiaries will be, will, can be many more. As an entire group, these are the things we will, we will be have reached a consensus on. So we're going to walk off the stage now. We're going to have you here. I've been asked to ask you two questions which you might or might not want to address today. One is uh, juvenile, uh, juvenile, the homes for the JJ homes and the people who monitor and, and run, the, how do we monitor it? How do we get the right people in it? And the second is there's confusion in many aspects of CSA between what is a state subject and what is a central subject. What is in your hands in the government of Maharashtra, for example, versus what has to be referred to Delhi? If you can th shed some light on these two things, that will be great. Outside of that, uh, the floor, the platform, the podium, everything is yours. Thank you. <laughs>